today's video is how I use Google Earth to paint the location of the Modiste from the Netflix series Bridgerton. If you Google Bridgerton locations in Bath, you'll pull a great list that's easy to find within Google Earth. Some people prefer to use Google Maps Street View once they have an address. I decided to be bold with this and experiment with a painting technique I've rarely used. I'm not making a pencil underdrawing, but instead I'm using my paintbrush to map out the larger shapes. It meant that the perspective I had hoped to get was lost immediately and the door on the right was in the wrong place. But this is my sketchbook and sketchbooks are where I make mistakes so I can learn what to do right next time or on a bigger painting. There was a time when my frustration would not allow me to keep going, but now I embrace the things that don't work. Who knows, maybe at some point within this painting, I'll be able to find a way to fix it and maybe salvage or hide just how wrong it is. to uh, make a space for where my windows are going to be. I want to include that in um, where I'm mapping out my final drawing here. And so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning my brush and drying it slightly on my rag. And then I'm using it to lift some of the paint out and just to lighten the area. And so I'll end up with a lighter shade um, in the blocks that will later on uh, become the windows. The building in Google Earth is pretty dirty um, above the bay window of the pickle shop um, and to show the brickwork I decided to use a technique called charging in. Now typically charging in is done wet on wet which is where you wet your paper first and drop your paint in and then drop your second colour in but because I'm sketching this out as you can see um, here, I'm using wet paint on dry paper and that's called wet into dry. Now the charging in technique that I mentioned um, is where you take a second colour and drop it into the wet paint, um, which you will see in a, in a moment or two. Um, the idea is you will allow the paint to move in the water and a mingle, a mix in any way that it, it, it likes. 
and you end up with um, a really interesting mix of paint on your page. Here you can see the second colour going in. See how it moves? Kind of um, just leave it alone and let it move around and you can end up with some really pretty and you know stuff that you didn't anticipate. If you really want the pigments to travel, uh, the wetter the paper or your brush, um, the more water in there, the further it will flow. Uh, but for my purposes, the wet in dry works perfectly well. And here you can see I'm adding a third uh, color right there and it just adds a little bit of variation and a bit of depth. In fact, I was quite happy with the way this area actually turned out. Now I've finished mapping out my large shapes and the areas that I want to be watercolour, I need to let this dry thoroughly so that when I come back with my pens, uh, my ink doesn't run and spoil the painting. I'm going to be using a collection of fountain brush pens and fountain pens and I believe a gel pen at some point. And, um, I'm using them depending on the colour. This one has grey ink and it's water soluble so I'm using a wet paintbrush to add uh, the lintel area above the window. Um, the grey is perfect for that. This is a platinum carbon desk pen with a fine nib and I like drawing with this one because it is very fine. I get a nice line weight and it's consistent. Also, I use platinum carbon ink in this one. It's a nice dark ink. It's not a true black, but it's close enough. And um, it's the, the pen has never failed me. It's a nice smooth line. Now you can see the windows that I'm drawing in here. They're not even, they're not well placed. They're just a suggestion of windows. And that's because um, I, I really don't want this to be a feature. The paint itself has dried very pleasingly. And I don't want to, I don't want to overstate the windows. They're not the star of the show, um, but I just need to show that they're there. And I feel like these naive boxes do that perfectly well. Um, when I add color later on, they, they will read like windows and I was quite happy with that. I'm actually taking a bit more care and time over the front of the shop. Um, the, the proportions are off and the perspective is off, but I don't let that stop me um, taking care to still try and suggest an eye level and a little perspective. Um, it's it, quirky drawings with incorrect placements, and they can still work. And, um, you know, until you finish a drawing you can't really be sure um, so you know if you make mistakes just keep going mistakes can often lead to um, a pleasing result at, at the end of the day
I'm using a pocket Pentel brush pen with black ink to create the down pipe or the drain pipe um, on the building. And I usually go straight to very dark rather than layering, particularly in a sketchbook. Um, so for that purpose, straight to ink works very well. When Google were in Bath taking the photographs for the maps, um, the deli was called Pickled Greens. Uh, obviously we know it as the Modiste, um, but I felt like I really wanted to record it as it is in everyday life. Um, if I want to, and I might, go back and um, paint some of the buildings as the scene in the Bridgerton series, um, I'll use a different set of photographs and uh, we'll see. I mean, this was fun and I might do a few more, um, but we'll, you know, there's so many ways to approach these things. It's fun. Right here you'll see that the ink is starting to bleed into the um, paint. I'd completely forgotten that I had used uh, non-waterproof ink at this point. Um, but instead of worrying about it, I actually start to draw the ink um, into the spaces to create the dark shadow and, and used it um, to my advantage. So, you know, when these things do start to go wrong, you can just react and decide um, can this be an advantage or do I need to let it dry and perhaps try and cover it up later? Um, either way, it's these things happen and it's best to just go with it.
You see here I'm using a Signo Broad gel pen um, with white ink and I'm getting quite good results because my the surface of my page is dry. Um, if it was damp, the ink would just soak right in and that's why so many people struggle with these uh, gel pens. You have to have a very dry surface. Um, uh, this pen here, this is a Kuretake brush pen. Um, it's got grey, I'm going to say oyster grey Mont Blanc ink in there and it's water soluble. So I can use it to add some shadow and some low lights to the windows and I can also um, take a paintbrush and just drag some of the ink out for shadows uh, or to thin it out a little bit if I feel the ink is a little heavy and not quite what I was aiming for. This green fountain pen is a Sailor Food. It has a 55 degree angle bent nib, um, which means depending on the angle I hold the pen um, in relation to the paper, I get a different line weight. Um, so I can get a really nice thick broad line or a really thin line. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to make sure you're getting the lines that you want. Um, but they're great. They're um, they're a, a fun tool. left to do now is make a few notations on my sketch um, you don't have to do this but I like to do this I, I paint a lot and I have a lot of different sketchbooks and um, sometimes I just need a little reminder if you stuck with me this long thank you very much for watching it's appreciated um, you might consider hitting the thumbs up or the thumbs down and subscribing and that way you'll see anything else I put out. Thanks.